standing on the causeway just outside Panama City. I'm standing in front of the Evolution and Molecular Biological Labs of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. My name is Rashira Castaneda. I'm a senior undergraduate student at McGill University and I'm completing a four-month internship in the Collins Lab with my partner Mora, who will be introduced to you shortly. Today we'll be taking you on a tour of the Collins Lab and explain to you what our project is about. Hi, I'm Mora. I'm also a senior undergraduate student at McGill and I'm going to take you inside the Collins Lab and explain to you a little bit about what our particular project involves. Come on in. Dr. Colin works on calyptrian gastropods, which are a family of marine snails that are quite common throughout the world, but are also very abundant in this area. And here they live along the coast in the rocky intertidal zone. And <clears throat> so the way they live is they have these strong muscular feet under their shells that they use to fasten to the rocks in the intertidal zone. And so you can see this snail is fastened to the bottom of this little cup using that strong muscular foot. And from there they filter water through their bodies and they filter out little particles of food. And so essentially they're filter feeders. And so we've collected all of these snails that are in these incubators from the rocky intertidal zone. Um, one of the things that's very interesting about the um, environment in which these snails live is that it's defined by two different seasons. And so one of the sort of aquatic seasons uh, is characterized by fairly cold water temperatures and a lot of upwelling and so pretty high nutrient availability for the snails. And the other season is characterized by warmer water temperatures and lower, nu lower nutrient availability. And so one of the things that Dr. Collin has found in the past um, is that egg size and larval size of these snails tends to be larger at colder water temperatures. And so that's kind of interesting, and that finding sort of formed the basis for our own project that we're currently working on. Um, so one of, the, one of the potential consequences of climate change in the future may be that we see stronger El Nino events, more unpredictable changes in water temperature, um, and sort of abrupt, potentially abrupt shifts in temperature um, in the environment in which these snails are living. And so we thought it might be interesting to look at that a little bit uh, more closely. And so for our study, we use one species of calyptrated snail called Crepidula marginalis that you see here. You can see it's quite pale with little stripes. Um, and so we're using this one species to study, these, um, to study the effects of abrupt shifts in temperature. And so basically what we're doing is we have half of our samples in this um, hot incubator and half of the samples in the cold incubator. And these incubators approximate the temperatures they would experience in the wild. And so we're currently waiting as they reproduce and um, as they produce broods of larvae, we measure the larvae. Um, and once they've produced a certain number of broods, we'll switch them to the other incubator and uh, look at the effects of that really abrupt change in temperature um, to see whether their larval size shifts immediately or whether there's some kind of time lag or um, what the other effects are on their reproductive process. We're going to give you a bit of a close-up um, of the anatomy of the snails and we're going to show you um, sort of how they reproduce and yeah. So yeah, what you're seeing there is a male. You can see uh, so the sort of can I can I yeah. point? Okay. So the round part here, that's the foot that we were talking about, the muscular foot that they use to fasten to the substrate, and the part that's sort of moving around there. I can just get that into focus. That's his head, his little sensory tentacles there, and what you're seeing, you may not be able to see this very well, but what you're seeing over to the side here, this sort of long uh, appendage here, that's the penis, and so. These males, the way they mate with the females is they they climb on top of the shell. They're much smaller than the females. And they climb on top of the shell of the female and they reach this penis around underneath um, and mate with her that way. Um, so what's another really interesting thing about these snails is that um, when they're small, they're male, and as they grow, they become female. So they're what's called sequential hermaphrodites. So we're going to move over and show you the female now. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit. She's 
quite a lot bigger than he is. There you go. So this is the female. It's not a very clear view of her head, but again, um, this here is the foot, and her head is, is just over here. And her oviduct is right in here. You can't see it very well, but it's sort of a yellow appendage coming out from, from under her mantle. Um, and so that's where she lays her eggs from. And she'll keep her broods underneath her until they hatch into larvae. So she'll, so when the when the females have eggs, we'll show this to you in a few minutes. But when the females have eggs, they'll have these several capsules filled with eggs that they'll keep under their shells until they're ready to hatch. So we're gonna go on and show you a little bit more of the reproductive cycle of the calutrade snails. So we're just gonna show you where the eggs are kept by the female during development. So twice daily we check for eggs which are kept underneath the shell of the female where she holds them until they are ready to hatch. Unfortunately you can't see them very well here in the video but they are present and they're there. So once the eggs hatch, they are larvae and they're released into the water where we also check twice daily. And once they're released into the water we collect them to do our analysis of size and uh, diameter of the larvae. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of the data co of the larval collection. So here we have larvae in stuck to the sides of the of the cup. So I'm just going to remove some of the larvae that were on the male and female. This is the male which I'm removing. Plop it in the water and the female. I will be using 70% ethanol to kill the larvae, to fix them in their state, all around. And because for this species they stick to the sides of the wall, I'm just going to rub my finger all around. Add some more ethanol, a little vial where we collect the larvae for further analysis. And there you have it, our larva. So after the larval collection, we put them on the slide to take pictures of them through this microscope. So this is what the larva looks like. From these images, we then use computer programs to take different size measurements of the larva to complete our project. Gave you a taste of the type of research that goes on in the Nautilus Marine Labs. We have to get back to our project now, but thanks very much for watching, and we do hope that you will come and visit if you're interested in biological research.